everyone i just want to do crud functionality on a single table so what i'm doing going to do is i'm going to create a staff table in php my admin and then i'm going to show you how to do php crud functionality across create read update and delete starting with the table in php my admin uh, the naming convention that i'm using is just going to use t underscore for the prefix of tables and staff is the name of the table so i'll click on go and the different types of fields i'm going to keep it simple I'm just going to have a staff underscore ID field. That is going to be an int. Uh, length of values, if it's an int, I usually put in at 8, unless there's a reason uh, something bigger. So auto increment that, and I want to set it as a primary key. So click on go. So that's my primary key set up. Then I'm just going to have two simple fields, which are just forename and surname. And both of those are going to be varcars. So surname and varkar and save oh, valid length of my two fields there well how many characters do i expect i think 30 should be fine on each of those 30 and save so that's my table created i'm now just going to insert some records so i can have some dummy data when i'm showing you the crud functionality and i just stepped out there and just use the insert tab put in four dummy records there so four different staff members. Now let's go over to the PHP. I've created a PHP page in my my favorite uh, IDE, which is just brackets for HTML and PHP, and I've called it show-staff.php. And in this file, my first order of business is to connect to the database. So I'm using my MySQLi set of functions for connecting and dealing with MySQL. And uh, in MySQLi, MySQLi underscore connect, I've got four different parameters. So the name of the host, uh, the username, the password, and just the name of the database as well. Uh, I'm taking the return of MySQLi underscore connect, setting it into this connect um, variable. Now, that would be enough, but it's always a good idea to put in some kind of error handling. And what I'm doing here is if the connection comes back as false, uh, this if statement will check that and I'll get an actual error statement to say whether it's come back as false uh, and what the reason is. So I can go into the browser then and I can test this page just by entering the actual URL into the address bar, pressing enter. Uh, if I see just a blank white page, that means that the likelihood is the connection is working. And just to double check that, again, if I go view source, I should see all the normal HTML tags coming out there. If there was a syntax error or some problem with the actual connection to the database, I would either get a blank white screen with no code coming out, or I would get an error coming back from the uh, mishandled connection to the MySQL database. Next, I'm going to open up a new uh, PHP scriptlet. Uh, I'm keeping them separate because later on I might uh, separate some of these different things into different include files, which I'll talk about later. But my next thing that I want to do is I want to create my SQL query and then to run that query as well. So uh, usually the way that I set it up and the standard way would be that we would create the actual SQL query in a string and we save it to a string variable. A good name to put on this variable is just $SQL. And then I execute the query. Again, I'm using my MySQLi set of uh, functions from PHP. And the one to execute the query is MySQLi underscore query. That takes the two different parameters, the connection that we've already set up previously, and also the $SQL variable. That goes away, runs the query, and takes back the result set and puts it into uh, this variable called dollar results. And I'll just tidy up that code slightly. And then the next thing I want to do is handle this result. So usually what comes back from a query like select all from staff is I'll get an array of results. And to handle that, I need to put in a while loop. While loop, and I'm using this result array. I'm going to use the function MySQLi fetch array to handle that. And what that does, it rifles through all of the different records in that array and puts each record into this row variable for each iteration of the loop. So let me just close off that loop. And what we can do there is then we can just take dollar row, which is an array itself, and we can pick out any of the different fields that we want from this particular row. 
So these are the field names from the database. So if I want the forename of one of the lecturers or staff, I can just put in dollar row square brackets because it's an array and the label that I'm looking for is forename. So let's echo out that forename and I'm just going to put in a break tag after that as well just to show them on separate lines. And let's put that in a string and let's run that, save it, go back to the browser and refresh. So we're getting the four different names there, the four different four names of the actual lecturers coming from the table. And I can add in whatever other different fields that I want. For instance, if I also want to include in the surname, uh, I will get that as well. So and perhaps I don't want to break between those two, but I want a space between the actual forename and the surname. So now we should get the forename and the surname coming out for each of the different, uh, the different lectures. And there we go. It's now down to your HTML and CSS skills to decide how to actually display the information. Remember that I've got, at the moment, four different records in that T staff table, and I want to display them all. In my case, I'm just going to choose to show them in an actual table element in HTML as well. And I'm just resizing down my code here so I can fit it all on the screen without wrapping. But I'm putting in all of the different inner table elements that I would need. So I need a table row for each different record that I'm accessing. And then each different field that I'm accessing, I'm going to drop that into its own table data cell. And after that, what do I need? Well, I need a table tag at the top. I'm putting these table tags actually one just above that PHP script section and one below because I know whatever happens I will definitely need um, those table tags and then I can just insert each of the different record rows as I go. So I save that, go back to my browser and refresh and I can see I'm getting my staff IDs here as well. I'm also getting the actual forename and surname of each of the different members of staff. Let's just put a style on some of that as well. Going up to the head section, I'm inserting an internal style sheet here. And then just uh, you know, just refresh that. Uh, so I'm getting my actual table borders here as well. Going back to my table, it's a good idea to put in a table row just inside the actual table, just as the first row, so I can get ID, forename, and surname, the actual headers. So these are the labels that are going to show up on the actual um, browser. So I get those and I can style them differently in a moment. Um, and then lastly, something that is very important every time that you open up a database connection, you should always at the end of the page close the actual database connection as well. So again, the function MySQLI underscore close, pass in the connection. If we don't close our connections, if we've got a very busy server, suddenly all of the different sessions that different users can have will open up multiple different um, uh, connections every time that they access different pages and after a while your server will fall over. So that's good practice. So that's just the first uh, read section of the CRUNT functionality of setting up an actual table in PHP MyAdmin and using PHP MySQLI functions uh, to access that database and show the data. Uh, in the next video I'll be going through some of the other different functionalities of CRUD.